Okay, so now we are recording again. Please tell me if you see my screen. Yes, perfect. Yes, miss. Let's continue with this. Defining or non-defining relative clauses. I'm glad that before the break, you gave me some examples. You're right. Those are the differences and the examples were correct. Can we continue? Can we go on? All right. Now, summarizing the importance and the differences between these clauses, okay? The most important thing to understand is that we need to have a defining relative clause in order to know exactly who or what the speaker is describing, whereas we don't need to have a non-defining relative clause to know who or what the speaker is describing. Remember, the non-defining one just adds extra elements, okay? Alma, can you please read the first example and better the second? Yes, it says, my brother who lives in Ireland is rich. You have more than one brother. Exactly. If I say my brother who lives in Ireland, in Ireland is rich, it is implicit that I have more than one brother because I'm saying the one who lives in Ireland. Okay. Meaning I have more than one. Better number two. Yes, my brother who lives in Ireland is rich. You have only one brother. Exactly. Do you see the differences? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Questions? Uh, I have one question about this. Um, so for example, in the first case, it says my brother who lives in the in Ireland is rich. Uh, I don't know if that's a non-relative clause. Um, because you are not making, you are not defining your, it's a relative um, defining clause, the first one. The first one it's defining? Defining relative clause, right? Yes. Yeah. But the second one doesn't need another comma. My brother who lives in Ireland because I am defining my brother or I'm adding information in that case. But I am specifying where my brother lives. Mm -hmm. But the second one has a comma. It says my brother, comma. I thought it needed another a one. Second comma. A second comma. A second comma where? Before Ireland. Before Ireland. My brother who lives in, comma, Ireland? Uh, after Ireland then. After. 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 My brother, comma, who lives in Ireland, comma, is rich. It, it doesn't need a second comma because if you add a second comma, you need to add a pronoun again. Oh, okay. Because we never say is rich. That's a typical uh, mistake. We always use the pronoun and then to be. Okay. And plus here, here, it's only one idea. If you remember Gloria's example was who is an actress no or how was your example Laura? you gave two pieces of information do you remember I, yes uh, i said um marilyn okay. monroe no, who was said... an american actress ah, uh -huh. thank the happy birthday to the president i don't remember exactly yeah, what i said that, that, there are two ideas marilyn monroe Oma, who is the uh, singer or an actress comma thank the happy birthday president it's two different ideas and here is this one okay. right now let's take a look at this exercise again okay then what is the difference who can explain the difference between these clauses now that we know the information Hello? Right? Uh, the difference, like identifying which is which. Mm -hmm. what, what do you see different now in the sentences? If you can explain to me the difference of those two. Okay, in, in my opinion, what I see different, now they understand what the comma means and how it's used. Huh? I think 
I think expresses the first one expresses uh, the specific on where uh, I in my in this case where I saw the the adverb. Okay. All and right. the second one on the second one, I think is um, in contrast with the first one. I believe is just giving uh, the main idea of what is writing about. Okay, let's see. That makes sense. Here I have two differences. That's why it says one and two. One of the differences, okay? There was, all, in one sentence, we understand there was only one advert and it appeared on job line yesterday. Yesterday, sorry, yesterday. That would be the defining relative clause. Okay, another difference. In the other sentence, it implies there were several adverbs and the person is writing about the one which appeared yesterday. That would be non-defining. <clears throat> okay, that's the difference. Now we're going to make you practice with this, okay? Let's do an activity on relative clauses, all right? Write sentences from this prompt, two with defining relative clauses and two with non-defining relative clauses. In this activity, we're going to do it in pairs, okay? So I'm going to send you for a couple of minutes to a breakout room because two heads think better than one. So I'm going to send you and you will come up with the examples, okay? You have four sentences. Two, these are prompts, okay? You need to organize everything it says into a sentence, two with defining relative clauses and two with non-defining, okay? Let me tell you how the themes will be. <clears throat> so, okay, room one, Alma and Armando. Room two, Constanza and Areli. Room three, Daniel and Gloria. Room four, Eric and Mildred. Room five, Jasmine, Letty and Bere. Okay. Is it clear what we have to do? Yes. Remember that when I share. Can we add? Can we uh, add a, a nouns and... Um... Yes, yes, because these are not complete sentences. These are prompts for you to build on sentences, okay? Um, right. Just keep the essence, okay? That's it, just keep the essence. And um, sentences will be totally different, no problem, all right? Just two relative clauses and two with non-defining. Please take a picture of this because when I open the breakout rooms, remember that it erases, okay? The screen. Ready? Okay, let's do this, please. I'm going to be joining the breakout rooms and when I consider time is up, I'll make you come back, okay? Creo que no te entiendo.
we are in the same place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't know what what happened. <laughs> They are recording in this moment. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> well, we we finished so. Yes. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> <so> funny. Hello, welcome. Let's wait for the rest of your partners, okay? Okay, everybody's back at the main session. How was the activity? Uh, I'm still having trouble with identifying the the, the details of uh, the differentiate, to dif differentiate the, the non-defining and defining. So did we. I, I have an example. Can I share it? Sure, of course. Do you want me to stop sharing screen? Yeah, I would like to share my screen. Of course. This is a complex topic. It, it needs practice. Don't worry about it. We will have more practice. And if you feel we need more, ne next session we practice more. Okay? That I is need all yours. To of allow course, we need more <laughs> to share my screen. Yes, let me. The whole uh, you have permission now. Yes. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I found this example in the book. So um, we have, I think it's very clear in this, with this example, we have the students, comma, who walk on the top of the hill, so a large hill, and this is not defined. And B, the students who walk to the top of the hill, so a large hill, this is defined. And um, teachers, Nancy said before, um basically we can erase this one and nothing happened right it's just extra information and in, in this case we have who we say or we answer the question who so you tell me that which picture is a and which picture is b according to the sentence I think the second one, the, the, the second one, write a number. A1 and B2. Exactly. A to the left and B to the right. Yes, I agree. It's funny okay. learning through pictures. <laughs> Can you repeat your it was answer? It's really confusing. Uh, a, I think he say A is the one on the left and B is one on the right. Yeah, exactly. This is A and this is B. So, um, teachers Nancy told us about how many, right? In this one, the students, well, 
it doesn't say a number or a who, it's just in general, right? Okay, so our ego. And this is just extra information. And in the second picture, we talk about this specific group of students. That's why we use uh, who walk on the top of the hill without commas. Um, there is a, a book where you can find this explanation. It's called, it's a really good book for teachers. I really recommend it. <clears throat> It's called Teaching English Grammar for Gym Scripts. And um, well, they, I just took the samples from here <laughs> because it explained it. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Can you, do you have the PDF or you, do you have the yeah. website? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you have the explanation and other key points and this is something that I found here, like the commas that uh, Daniel, I think it was Daniel, just asked. As, as you can see, you have uh, two commas. You can use two commas if it's kind of in the middle. But if you have uh, like the relative classes at the end, we can omit the last comma, no? just use a full stop instead of comma like the index hump. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I think this example is useful. Uh, okay, I think I understand that when we use a comma is because we are going to add extra information, extra information. And yeah. immediately and not defining relative plus. Yeah. Not yeah. defining, not defining because it's not saying I'm someone in a specific. Not okay. pointing someone in a specific while defining you are defining who or yeah. what or which or where or why. Remember, we have a more than one relative class. In the second example of your images, they are different groups of students. Yeah. No? And uh -huh. you're specifically, specifically <laughs> talking about the ones it's, that went on the top of the hill. Exactly. This one. They were the ones that saw the eagle. That's in why the, it doesn't require the, the students in general. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Betty. I think this is a very good example because uh, sometimes with pictures or with images, it's a little bit easier. Like the example she gave us from the book with the two groups of people, then when we put an image, sometimes it's easier. Okay. Yeah, I have a lot of problems with these topics in the past um like i struggle a lot i couldn't understand and of course my students it was worse for them until i found this word and said, ah it's not too difficult <laughs> yeah <That's> why. <laughs> thank you very good so let me share screen again for the activity okay do you have any other questions? While I was joining the groups, I didn't want to interrupt, but I, I listened that some of you still had a question. Daniel, you said you were in the explanation, but then you were busy with something work related. So you missed the explanation, but with Letty's example, is it clear? Uh, can, miss, uh, can you check the examples? We, Gloria and me made. Yes, sure. We were Actually, struggling. We want to hear much. what you wrote and then I'll tell you the answers. Okay. Okay. No uh, we had the three, the third group of words. Uh, head office, New York, employs 2,000 people. Uh, we made two sentences. The first one, she, she made the first one. The head office that employs 2,000 people is, look, uh, well, I have to mention the commas. The head office, comma, that employs 2,000 people is located in New York. Okay. This I one. think it's not defining. This one is non-defining. That's why you're using the commas. Okay. And okay. the second one was the head office located in New York employs 2,000 people with no commas. I think it's going to be easier for me if you send me the pictures in the chat of what you guys wrote. Okay. Okay, please. 
Of course, of course, of course. Just give me one minute. Yes. The rest of the teams, how did you find the activity? Is it good? I found it difficult. It, I was talking with Constance about the examples and we we found two in uh, defining and two in non-defining. But uh, can we send you the image or can we re write it on the chat box? Yes, any, you can send it to the chat or write it on the chat box, but it's better for me to see it written. Okay. Pretty much the book has answers, right? But yes, these sentences, maybe what you wrote as a non-defining, another team wrote it as a defining one. Miss, I, I was telling, uh, talking to Letty and Jazz, uh -huh. and I considered that, as you mentioned, all of them, you can make them defining or non-defining. Yes. No? Yes. So that, that's why we can have the different because uh, I don't remember, Daniel wrote non-defining and I wrote uh, that sentence with defining or using defining. Exactly. It depends on how you arrange yeah. the elements you're adding, whether the sentence is going to be defining or not. So I cannot say this one should be defining. No, even the book. Even the book says suggested answers because there are more than one correct answers. Okay, All right. So it's pretty much just how the how we order the phrases. Yes. To give it a defining or undefining. Yes, because you organize the sense you're giving. The head office that employs two thousand people is located in New York. Non-defining. The head office located in New York employs thousand people. Exactly. The sentences are correct, Daniel. Then the company gave the job to the person who shows more determination, defining the applicant who graduated, who graduated from Bologna University, has a degree in biology, uh -huh, just from the head office, which is in New York. Employees to uh -huh. the manager who interviewed me is kind and helpful. Your sentences are correct. I'm going to share with you suggested answers from the book. But as you can see, it says suggested because the ones you send are also correct. Okay. Why? Because again, I repeat, you give them the sense. You decide whether they are defining or not. How? Well, how you arrange the elements, how you place the commas, right? Oh, Miss, can we share a pic with our answers to your WhatsApp? Yes, I already checked too that you guys sent. Uh -huh. uh, okay, you tell me one better. Okay, excellent. All right, send the pictures. I can go through them and make the corrections while we do and while we continue with another activity. I, I'm not, I was not planning on bombarding you with activities like this. Uh, well, yes, we have more activities for relative clauses, but I will prepare some more for the next class, okay? So let's continue here. Okay, we still have two more activities and a corpus spot observation. Let's do activity four, instruction. If the relative pronoun is not necessary in any of these sentences, cross it out. I repeat the instruction. If the relative pronoun is not necessary in any of these sentences, cross it out. Okay, this one is individual work, just check if the relative pronoun, which is in bold, it's needed or not, okay? <clears throat> if you have the book, you can cross it out. If the Cambridge English advanced, if not, just write on a piece of paper one to six and uh, check mark when it's correct and cross when it's not, okay? When it's not needed. Let's do only number four, all right?
Only exercise four. Only exercise four. I see two people are done or can we continue? Yes, only four. All right. Let's see. Um, as I said, yes, it was only exercise four. So I'm going to assign people to read them. You read the sentences and you tell me if you cross it out or not, okay? Number one, Gloria. Number two, Jasmine. Number three, Mildred. Number four, uh, Armando. Number five, Eric. Number six, Alma. Okay, uh, number one, I worked in a building which had no air conditioning. I didn't cross it out. Okay, so it means it is necessary, correct. Okay, number two. Okay, <clears throat> the clothes uh, she wore to the office were very scruffy. I crossed the word that. You crossed the word that, correct. It's not needed. We still understand. Okay, number three. Mm, the place, um, but I think that it, it can be crossed it out. The yes. place she works has a gym for staff. Exactly, correct. You can cross it out, we still understand. Number four. The place, the place that I worked in the last summer was great. I crossed it. Okay, correct. It's crossed. Excellent. Number five. Who was in charge of number five? It was a boy. Eric, no? Uh, it was me. Sorry, I have my mic off. <laughs> right. Uh, he has an inspirational quality which defies analysis. Uh, I didn't cross it out. Okay, this one is needed, correct. Final one. Yes. Uh, her colleagues are also the people that she socializes with. I cross, I cross the word. Exactly, now it's not needed. Correct, okay, you're getting there. Now let's do one more activity, okay? Another individual activity. Which sentence in each pair is more formal? This one is easy. If you have two pairs, let's decide, okay? Please let me know when you're done. Okay, I can see the majority is done. Let's check, okay, Areli, number one, read to the two sentences, tell us which one is more formal. And, um, um, Bere, number two. Okay, this is the man to whom I was talking. This is the man I was talking to. My God. And I thought I I put that the more more formal letter A. 
Letter A. That's correct. Okay. This is the man to whom I was talking immediately. When we say to whom, that's more formal. Besides, you don't finish with two usually sentences. Speaking, yes. Writing, uh-uh. Okay. To whom I was talking. Correct. Better. The beach was very far from the hotel that I was staying in. The beach was very far from the hotel in which I was staying. Okay, I think it's letter B because of the preposition in which. Because of the preposition, exactly. You don't end a sentence with a preposition in formal English, okay? Very good. Now, the corpus is very important. Gloria, please help us read the corpus pot of this unit. Okay, the Cambridge English Corpus shows that exam candidates often make mistakes with relative pronouns and prepositions or sometimes leave them out completely. I am writing to recommend the one month business course on which I was sent recently. Not I am writing to recommend the one month business course what I was sent on recently. Okay, now. It says that often candidates make mistakes with relative clauses, relative pronouns and prepositions, okay? So here on the first sentence, what is the difference between the, between the correct one and the non-correct one? The preposition can't go at the end of a sentence. Okay, all right, not at the end, okay, but I am writing to recommend the one month business course on which I was sent. So we can- And we are talking, sorry. And we we're talking about a course. Yes. That's why we need to use which, not the place. Mm -hmm. Okay, and on which makes it really uh, defining, really direct, okay? On the other hand, the incorrect answer was, I am writing to recommend the one month business course where I was sent on recently. Okay, so there is a position for prepositions, okay, when needed. Now, to finish this practice, at least for today, as I said, I'm going to prepare more for the next Saturday. Well, not the next Saturday, sorry, because the next one we're going to have a test, okay? But after the test, we're going to, continue with relative classes, all right? Let's do this final activity, correcting sentences, and then we check together, all right?
Ready, guys? Okay, you have more time. Relax, relax. We just have to correct the sentence, adding or a kind of preposition. Sorry, I was talking and my microphone was on mute. Yes, some of the sentences need a preposition. Some others might need another type of correction. It's up to you and then we check, okay? Okay, guys, ready? Ready? Okay, excellent. Now let's check, okay? Number one, this is the area of research which he's working. This is the area of research which he's working. Me, I wrote, this is the area of research on which he is working exactly correct on which is working excellent okay number two here are some new statistics you can have here are some new statistics you can have confidence in, in. Uh, here as you can see even when i read when i read the sentence i was like what because it doesn't sound correct Without the preposition, it sounds incomplete. I was like, huh? but yes, here are some statistics in which you um, have confidence. In which? In which? In which? Okay. Uh, miss, I don't know if this is also possible for the same sentence. Here are some new stat statics, statistics, I'm sorry, statistics with which you can have confidence. Mm, it's better if you use the preposition in. Okay. Make it more specific, right? Okay. Teacher, um, yes. Can you repeat the answer, please? Yes. Here are some statistics in which you can have confidence. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Number three. This is a theory for that 
there is little support. I wrote, this is a theory on where there is little support. Okay, any other option? I this wrote, is a theory for which there is a little support. No. This is a theory about which there is a little support. Almost there. This one is like Daniel's before. You need which. I wrote which. I wrote there is a theory for which there is a little support. Yes, for which. What did you write there? For which too? About. Uh, for which. For which. For which there the is no support. The correct is for which? Yes. Let me is, read. The, the first sentence was in which or on which? On which. On which. On which. On which. The third okay. one is, this is a theory for which there is little support. Okay? Yep. Yes. All right, number four. Is this the person who you spoke? Is this the person to whom you spoke? Is this the person? Is this the person to whom you were speaking? Okay. Bere, please, because I heard so many at the same time. Bere, can you please repeat yours? Yeah. Is this the person to whom you spoke? Almost there. With whom? You spoke. With whom? With whom you spoke. And that is correct. Okay. Areli, can you repeat yours? Sorry, I wrote, is this the person to whom you were speaking? To who you were speaking or talking to, but we try not to finish with two. It's, it yes, sounds okay. better than one better set. Okay? okay. More formal. Can you repeat it better, please? Yeah, is this the person with whom you spoke? So if we have talk, it's talk to, speak with, or it depends on the context. Ms. Nancy? It doesn't, it doesn't need a context in this case, because you are saying to whom, which whom, okay? With whom, sorry, you are saying, is this the person, okay? With you whom? Already, with whom? Because we normally say I'm talking to or I'm talking with. So in this case, is this the person with whom you spoke? Remember that whom will always be more formal than who. Than who. Yeah. So that's why it's yours but, is completely correct. But my doubt is about the preposition. Okay. To whom or with whom? No, in this one is with whom. How can I identify two than win? Mm. Because of the contest? Is this the person with whom I'm speaking with, I'm talking to? When we use talk, we use to. That's what like I said. In the first example, this uh -huh. is the man to whom. But in this case, we're using speak. Speak would be with. So uh, that was my, my first question. When we use talk, it's talk to. In this case, talk it's talked. Is this the person uh, to whom you talk? No? Yes. If we change. Okay. Thank you, Miss. I got it. You're welcome. And final one. Unfortunately, the conference that you enroll on has been canceled. Unfortunately, the conference on which your enroll has been canceled or canceled. I don't know. I wrote the conference on where you were enrolled. Uh, Daniels, I can you repeat yours? It's it's almost correct. Please repeat it. Unfortunately, the conference on which you enroll has been canceled yes. or canceled. Has been canceled. Cancel. In which? In mm -hmm. which? You enroll in a confidence in a conference, not on a conference. Remember the the differences between in and on. Those are the differences here too. So we don't say on which; it's in which, Daniel. Okay. Can we use passive voice? 
in which you were miss would it be oh let me address this one by one better can you repeat your question i uh, yes miss that if we can use fuzzy voice for example unfortunately the conference in which you were enrolled has been cancelled yes that is also correct you can use passive voice too uh Thank eric you. uh unfortunately the conference which you are enrolled in has been canceled. Yes. Okay. I would say that speaking. I understand you because I know you lived for so many years in the US and spoken English and written English sometimes or most of the times are different. I understand your sentence. It's completely fine for speaking English. The position makes it more formal or at least sound more formal the position of the preposition. So it okay. shouldn't be, I mean, for spoken English, that's okay. But for written English, it should be the other order, the one Daniel mentioned. Okay. After okay. the okay. next session, we can discuss deeply because as you can see, the book is only giving us one practice on prepositions, only one. For not next Saturday, then next, I'm going to include activities on this, using the preposition more, okay? All right, but so far, because it's been a lot of grammar today so far, do you have any questions? Thank you for repeating number five. Oh. I'll, I'll do both, okay? Let me repeat number five, and then I'm, I'll go with you, Adelie. Number five, unfortunately, the conference in which you enrolled has been canceled. That's one option. The other option is Bere's passive voice. Bere, can you repeat yours? Yes, miss. Unfortunately, the conference in which you were enrolled has been canceled. Yes, both of those are correct for number five. Miss, I'm so sorry, but I, I know, I'm not sure if I'm correct, that when you are using prepositions, you can use just whom and which, or you can include all of uh, the words like when, where. When you're using prepositions, you mean in relative clauses? Yes, in relative clauses. Yes, there are some rules, but I'm going to tell you what I always tell my students uh, when I'm teaching a grammar point for TKT in English, and as teachers, you would understand this. In English, I never like to say never or always because English always finds a way to have an exception. Okay. But I understand what you mean, but somebody will always find exceptions for rules. Because I have a, a book where it's a relative close as five. So imagine one, two, three. There's a lot of explanation of it. And it says about prepositions plus whom and which. Mm -hmm. And I can find more just those ones. What I can do is include examples. The book that Letty mentioned, it's really good. Also, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Michael Swan book, uh, Practical English Usage. Mm -hmm. uh, have you heard that book? Yes. You I need have. that book. I have <laughs> grammar, book. English grammar in use. Oh. I have the one that Bere has. Yeah. I have <laughs> that one in basic, uh, intermediate and advanced one. But not I'll share with you this one I'm mentioning. I normally call it the grammar Bible because it has everything you want there. So I'm going to take activities from that one book for the next class, okay? Could, uh, could you repeat the name of a book, Miss? Yes, it's uh, Michael Swan is the writer and the name of the book is Practical English Usage. That book, whenever you need exceptions, it's, well, it's the one I, I need to go to to check your question, okay? because I don't want to lie to you, but I'll share it after the class. I'll send you the PDF. Oh, the, thank you, miss. The book is this thick. It's super thick. So it's divided into PDFs, okay? Because it's super thick, okay? I have a book uh, for phrasal verbs. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna share the PDF later because I need to look for it in yes. the group. Because when you learn phrasal verbs, it's easy to remember the prepositions. Yes. So I'm going to uh, share that with you. Just let and me find it. 
I promise I, I'll do it uh, this weekend. I need to check where it is for it. because I don't remember, but I'll share it in the WhatsApp I will, group. Now that Gloria mentions this, knowing what's the correct proposition for a phrasal verb and for collocations is vital. For example, here, there are verbs that have specific, phrase, specific um, prepositions. So if Gloria shares that one, and I share one that I have on uh, collocations for verbs, you can start practicing that, okay? Miss, I think I have the one that you mentioned, but it says diagnostic test for practical usage, third edition. It's from Oxford. It, is the writer Michael's one? Uh, can, I, can I share screen? Yes. Can you see? Michael Swan. Okay, this is another edition probably. Michael Swan and someone else. Because the one I have, I have it in PDF and I have it in print and it's purple. Okay, miss. It's purple. But yes, that's the logo too. So yes, it's probably one of the editions it has had because they renew and, and renew. But this is an awesome book. You know how students- Can you share the PDF? For a different yeah, sure. Please. I have two of them. Okay. Let me find the other one. But of course, I'm going to send this because I have this miss and another, but I don't remember what is it for. <laughs> I All just right. have it, but I have never read, you know? Okay. It's, it's interesting. That book, you can go to that book whenever you have doubts. In between, what's the difference between, between this verb or this verb or the exceptions to the rules? It has everything, okay? All right, now. Teacher, so if we want to practice uh, these exercises, we can look them up in, in, in the books or in Google as relative clauses or pr prepositions for relative clauses? Yes, I heard something in the, in the breakout rooms earlier and I believe Betty was the one who said it. She said, this topic is too extensive uh, yeah. to check in one class. So yes, if you want specific activities on prepositions, you can Google it like that. Prepositions with relative clauses, okay? Prepositions. My introduction to the topic was mm -hmm. first defining and not defining. And then we're looking at prepositions with relative clauses, okay? Prepositions. To be more specific. Because relative no se vayan a caer. Your kid. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. We promise es to be que, never ourselves. Es que aquí, entre, entre que cuida esto y hago mi, mi clase aquí, no puedo. I know. You have a swimming pool in your house. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is my uncle's house. But we, they are alone. They have no vacations for a year and a half. <laughs> So oh, I, uh, I was going to say, okay, next session we take it all in a house. Yes, let's go <laughs> to. No, that's not my house. Elise uncle's house to have our next class. So. Our next class. After the exam, we relax by the pool. I really feel yes. cold. Yes. No? That sounds like a perfect move. plan. <laughs> all right. I actually want to show you something. Let me see. I think I have it here. Hold on. Give me a. And here, okay, just to finish this topic. Well, not finish because we will continue with it. As we said, it's too extensive. But this goes deep in what Eric was mentioning, okay? Mm -hmm. I understand sometimes it sounds more normal or we're more familiar to give the preposition certain position, but that happens in, in spoken English, remember. Spoken English will always be more casual, unless you are super, super careful with what you're saying. But it's usually, uh, that's the way Cambridge defines it. Uh, written English is always more formal than writing because there's, a, there's room for thought, okay? So here, when it comes to relative clause says in more formal English, usually in written English, we tend to put the preposition before the relative clause. I think this is going to help Eric with the problem with the position, okay? Please read the two examples, Letty. 
It was the river in which the children prefer to swim. Uh, the person with whom he is negotiation in the chairman is the chairman of a large company. That is okay. formal. That is formal. So in which, with whom, I, I repeat, in formal English, we usually tend to check how these grammar explanations are very carefully written because as I said before, there are always exceptions. So we tend to put the preposition before the clause, before the clause, okay? On which, in which, with whom, in less formal English, however, which is spoken English, the prepositions at the end of relative clauses are common. This is what happened in your example, Larry. Okay, can you please read both examples here? Eric? Can you repeat that again? Yes, can you repeat these two examples, Eric? Uh, of course. Uh, from the one on the left, right? Yes, the right, the, the those in the right. Can you read them? Oh, the one Oh, okay. Uh, the music which Julie listens to is good. My okay. brother met a woman who I used to work with. Okay. This happens in informal, okay? In spoken English. But as a good tip for you, when using this informal English, which is written, the preposition goes before the clause, all right? Is this point clear? Yes. Let's yes. take some example in this chart and with this we can close and finish today's session. We have everyday English, formal English, okay? Letty, everyday English, number one, better formal English, number one, please. Yeah. Is that the man who she arrived with? Uh, formal English, is that the man with whom she arrived? Exactly. As we said before, whom will always be more formal than who, okay? Yes. And with whom, and we don't end with a preposition, okay? Number two, Daniel, everyday English, Eric, formal English. Uh, uh, do I start? No. Okay. I'm everyday English, right? Yes. Does he know the girl that John is talking to? Does he know the girl to whom John is talking to? Okay. No, not talking to, just to whom John is talking. That's it. Okay. Oh, sorry. Number it's muscle three. memory. That's, yeah, I know it's that's muscle, muscle memory. memory right there. That, that's why I wanted you to wow. check because I understand wow, that's you awesome. live in the States and this happens a lot. It happened to me too. And in, in spoken English, I, I let it go. <laughs> All right, Mildred, uh, number three, everyday English. Constanza, number three, formal English. The person who he is negotiating with is the chairman of a large company. Constanza? The person with whom he is negoti negotiating is the chairman of a large company. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Uh, Areli, informal English number four. Gloria, formal English number four. It is a club which many important people belong to. It is a club to which many important people belong. Exactly. Uh, Armando, number five, informal English. Alma, formal English. He likes the people that he lives with. He likes the people with whom he lived. Okay. Uh, Letty, informal English number six. Better formal English number six. The three that they had their picnic under was the largest and oldest in the park. Number five, right, Miss? Six. A six. The tree under which they had the picnic was the largest and oldest in the park. Okay, so check the formal English. After all of these examples, we can see with whom, to whom, with whom, to which, uh, under which, it always goes before. Two more examples. 
Two more examples, Daniel, informal English, Eric, formal English, and then Mildred, informal and Constanza, formal. It was the river that the children preferred to swim in. It was the river in which the children preferred to swim. Okay, very good. Mildred and Constanza? The jungle that the tribe lived in was full of strange and unusual animals. The jungle in which the tribe lived was full of strange and un unusual animals. There you go. Okay, so after all these examples, I think you can see the use of preposition. As Eric says, sometimes it's muscle memory, but don't worry, I'll prepare a class mainly on this, okay? All right, I didn't want to continue with another topic yet. Remember next session, we will have a test. Yes, next session we have the test. And after that, we continue with relative clauses now with uh, prepositions, okay? All right. Okay, excellent. So questions? No? No, teacher, thank you. Very good. So let's... Not Let's call it a day for today. Study what we have covered so far and get ready for the test. Okay, guys, thank you for being here today. Um, can, I, can I speak with you after the class? Yes, Eric. Yeah. Can I have a minute? Yes, okay. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Just a brief question. Okay. Miss, yes. I sent you my writing last like when you asked for it. Do I have to send it? Again? If you already send it, no, that's okay. Ah, okay, okay. And right. just now I'm going to send my sentences. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. So I'll stay with Eric and um, Areli, okay? Thank Did you, guys. I also you guys. want to ask you something, but I wait after Areli. It's a quick. Thing. Okay, sure, Gloria. After the class, we can check, okay? Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye Miss. Goodbye, guys. Bye. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Nice week. Okay, Eric, your question. Uh, Miss, well, first of all, I'm going to take the TOEFL on Monday. I've been studying on pretty much everything. They gave, well, I found on the internet, uh, the Princeton, something like that, uh, study for TOEFL guide. And I just want to know a little, like, if you have any insight on it, like, what would I, like, from what you've seen so far on my evaluations? For the TOEFL, the only thing is, for example, your writing, it's formal. I would say just do proof reading because you know a lot of formal words because of your studies, the states. However, what happens to you sometimes is the muscle memory thingy. So do proof reading so you avoid those small mistakes that are not needed. And give me a chance. I have to do something after class today, but later I can send you. I wish you had told me before I have material to prepare for TOEFL, but I can send it to you later today, Eric. Okay, awesome. Now, now I will appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so it will be much on proof reading pretty much. That would be the main. Proof reading, because you have good that. All right, sounds good then. That's something I wanted to ask, you know, just to your insight and see like, uh, I've been studying all these past two weeks, well, three weeks actually, I've been studying on it three weeks and 